thank you for joining my talk. From S-bombs to I-bombs, know what's happening in your clusters. Um, first, let's start with the most important thing. What's in it for you? Why should you stay here and not grab the next cup of coffee? I know I had one too many. So first we start by understanding why IBOM, which stands for Infrastructure Bill of Materials, is crucial for security, but also for any platform um, efficiency. Then we're gonna define IBOM and understand why we should all care about it. Uh, next, we'll talk about what's the implications um, in terms of attack service um, um, for IBOM. And later, learn how IBOM can help us all um, learn how to control our clouds better. So, um, who are we? Um, my name is Ido Niemann. I'm the co-founder and CEO at a company called Firefly. We're doing cloud asset management. I spent almost, almost 12 years in the Israeli Cyber Intelligence Force. Um, then led technology for a prominent hedge fund, worked for a startup in, in the serverless field, and with me today should be Cindy Blake, Firefly's VP of Marketing, but this is the first infrastructure fail, all right? So just like IBOM and SBOM, we created an amazing, we hope, amazing deck for you, but Cindy couldn't be here. So the software, the service worked well, but the infrastructure failed. And if we could do the bomb, the bill of material for the infrastructure, we could have prepped better for this call. So, so it will be only me, um, but I'll try to make up um, for Sydney's absence. So let's start with the basics. Um, for the past few years, S-bomb is being crazy, like a very hot uh, buzzword. So I'm, I'm sure most of you heard about it many, many times, so I don't want to reinvent the wheel and talk about what is SBOM and why it's important. So I asked the most, the smartest thing I know, um, ChatGPT, what SBOM is all about, and it gave me a very elaborate answer. So let's, let's take the key part of it. Um, it says something about software bill of materials, complete inventory of all software components. It has all third party software, open source libraries, and other components. This is where most of us are focusing our current SBOM um, efforts and endeavors. Uh, then the SBOM is essential component for software supply chain security. Supply chain is fantastic, personally. Uh, I'm, I, I'm really excited about this field. And uh, you need to list all the third party components. Right, so what basically says, let's understand what our services, our software is, is comprised of. Let's list all the open source, all the dependencies and the supply chain and understand um, um, what we have in our software because open source is huge, Stack Overflow is huge, GitHub is used, and we don't really know what our services are comprised of. And now let's try to define IBOM or Infrastructure Bill of Materials. First and foremost, it's a full inventory of our infrastructure. Where do we have our servers? Where do we have our storage? Where do we have our network? Everything that's connected. Kubernetes, uh, um, pods, but after we, uh, um, we list all the key components, we need to list an inventory, all the dependencies. For example, if I have a server, where is the server's storage? Uh, um, if it's connected to a network, what's the network that it's connected to? I am and so on and so forth. Then, obviously, we're here at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon, we, we should talk about child uh, processes and, and predecessors, right? If I have a Kubernetes cluster, I need to understand all the child resources. If I have a, a replica set, I need to know all the pods that connected to it and all the, the storage allowance. And the scale status, for example, if I have an auto-scaling group um, in my public cloud. Then, we should understand all the infrastructure as code, um, for example, Helm or Terraform or Ansible or Pulumi um, that connect to this environment or control or provision this environment or an infrastructure. And lastly, maybe as important as the native or the, the native cloud components, but many times overlooked, is all the third party tools that became integral part of our platforms, but we, we, we don't think about our Okta the way that we think about our replica set. We don't think about MongoDB Atlas like we think about an RDS instance on AWS. So all of those are super critical um, and you can find your, your, your favorite vendor um, across your infrastructure. 
Um, then, after we have the entire inventory and we understand how our platform is built and what components and dependency are, are comprising it, we should understand every configuration per each item on our inventory and each version. And the last part is have ownership. I know that in the modern era, especially, you know, I work a lot with SREs and platform engineering, blame is something that you can say because we're all in together and we need to support every uh, um, production issue together to solve it as, as fast as possible. But ownership is super critical for us to understand how to manage our infrastructure and how to cr really create the inventory because we create the I-bomb for a case where we have a problem or incident or security issue. Now we need to attend to the owner of the specific resource or environment and handle it. So we, we got to add it to the inventory. So we understood what, or hopefully understood what IBOM is. It's a full inventory of my entire um, platform. Um, hopefully it runs in the cloud. But now let's see some example on how this inventory looks like. So the very basic example is to me to write a small Python or Bash script to allow me to see every, in this case it's AWS machines, all the, the, the EC2, the servers um, that are older than 10 days, um, and are running and see all the sizes and understand how many servers I have, but very, very basic. Now I can go forward and, and list all of the different server is, servers in a specific region and even see uh, um, if I have some backup related to them. Next version will be to create something super complex or very complex that runs across my entire multi-cloud infrastructure and SaaS abilities and Kubernetes clusters and list every single resource in them, have um, the type associated with it, um, its name, its owner, its infrastructure's code, its uh, status, its location, its properties, ta its tags, its creation data and so on and so forth, but it's becoming super complex. And the next stage is have a dedicated inventory or asset management solution for the cloud native era. So after we understand what the concept of IBOM is and how we can start implementing it, we should probably understand what's the implications in terms of the attack service, surface. Sorry. So SBOM is huge for, for AppSec, right? Now everyone in AppSec thinks about supply chain and SBOM, and we are very much focused on scanning all the dependencies. And let's say if we're, we are Kubernetes fanatics, we, we all, always want to scan the images and understand everything is properly run. But what if I scanned all the dependencies and I scanned the image and everything looks okay and the configuration for this specific container is fine, but let's go back even to 2015, I'm running this, this Kubernetes pod inside a cluster which is vulnerable and now uh, um, I, can, I, can, I can do um, um, escape out of the container and go up from the kernel to uh, um, the, the, the pod that I like to take advantage of. So IBOM, allows us to really outline the entire attack service, not just the service, not just, like I showed you, those slides are here, but the infrastructure Sydney is missing. This is vulnerable. The, the human element is almost the most vulnerable. In this case, we, we were. So we need to understand the entire chain of our infrastructure in our service. So let's say, say I have a, a piece of software that run, runs on Azure and make sure that the, the entire Azure configuration is, is build and inventory and secure, and it's fine. And then I run Kubernetes on top of Azure and, and I'm taking care of the Kubernetes. But now I'm going out to MongoDB Atlas and MongoDB Atlas is a great service and I hope it's, it's always secure and we, I personally use it. Uh, but let's say someone manage, manages to take advantage of me shifting data in and out of MongoDB Atlas. So I need to understand that all this, this traffic goes in and out of, of Azure. And lastly, I have Datadog monitor this and I have Cloudflare using it. I'm using Cloudflare for CDN to, to uh, uh, distribute the data. So if I don't understand each and every component across the entire service, I'm missing out. So that, just like this image articulate, I can have a very strong chain, but if, if one link is super weak, um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably um, I'm doing something wrong security-wise. So let's see some basic example, some basic, some more than basic examples of overlooked um, IBOM um, um, 
incidents or, or um, issues. So, for example, Kubernetes. I can, again, scan my images, know that my cluster is correct, but if I don't keep track on my cluster version, I might run of out of date and vulnerable version of Kubernetes. API version per every object in my infrastructure. The operating uh, version and type of every node uh, um, that I run. A DB version, something that is, it can be a bit tricky because we all know that the, the public cloud security teams are amazing. And let's say I have, I'm running a managed Redis by AWS. And obviously, at least I can talk, talk um, um, about the people I know, the AWS security team can run and patch vulnerabilities in, in Redis faster than I can do it and I can implement in my production environments. So it's good, it's good to have a managed service in terms of security, but if I'm not allowing uh, um, auto upgrade to minor version, I might think that, oh, it's a managed service and it's fine and, and I'm now patched against this zero day that was just discovered this morning, but if I'm not allowing auto upgrade, I'm doing a, a bad service to my security team. Um, then we can talk about all the Terraform or other infrastructure as code modules that I run. Is it something that we created? Is it something that another team created? Is it a public uh, um, repo or public model? Because unfortunately, some bad actors inject vulnerable repos into public infrastructure as code modules, and I need to understand this uh, um, as part of my IBOM. And which part of my uh, um, infrastructure is consumed by each service because in case of an incident or in case I want to change something, I need to understand per service which infrastructure it consumes. And we go next, we can think about security group or VPC changes. Uh, um, I, I, I'll, I'll share a quick story um, from our, one of our customers at Firefly. So this relentless SecOps engineer um, examined a specific environment and found that um, there's a server, there's no need for it anymore, and uh, um, um, the server uh, uh, consumes a security group. So he looked at it, he saw, okay, security group, one server, I don't need the server, let's uh, do Terraform destroy, destroyed it, and he felt good, he uh, minimized the attack service for the environment, he eliminated some waste, and it was fine. But 15 minutes later, production started to, to crumble and some bad things happen to data retention. And why is that? Because this SecOps team set up a security group with uh, a server in Terraform. But then another team in the DevOps department saw this security group and added two additional servers to the security group. So the SecOps engineer examined the, the Terraform uh, uh, manifest and see one server in the security group. Does Terraform destroy? Terraform doesn't see any problem, destroy it. But the two other servers are now disconnected from the network and took production down. So this is very bad. And, and if they had a detailed IBOM, they would know that if, if the security group is deleted, then those two additional servers would go down. Another thing that, 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 that we should think about is how do we communicate changes to the infrastructure? What's the source of truth? If I'm the SecOps engineer and I see new ingress rule into my VPC, do I allow it or not? How do I know? I work in a large enterprise with hundreds of developers and I don't know if someone added a new uh, uh, a piece of software that needs a relay and talk to, uh, across my VPC. So how do I know it? If I have a detailed IBOM, I know I have now a source of truth for my infrastructure, and there are no questions asked. It's, it's not um, um, a, um, a game of a cat and mouse. The SecOps closed the ingress, the DevOps team or platform engine open it again to allow ingress for the SaaS vendors, and so on and so forth. Um, moving on, we can, we can understand in our IBOM where uh, or when all resources were deployed. So if I see lots of pods, obviously not pods, I hope you don't have pods running from 2017, but uh, compute instances running from 2017 that are still running might get me thinking and researching why it's happened. And uh, um, as a last example, a list of all the assumed roles by SaaS providers, right? Because I can tell you for, from some examples that, that are close to me, um, companies that don't remember if they 
already switched from Prisma Cloud to Wiz, or they're still using Cloud Health, or now it's Eptio, but should I remove this assume role or not? I don't know, and it's a mess. So now, af after understanding that, that, that we need to map the IBOM, let's see how it can be used in case of an incident. So let's hope it never happens, but, but I remember when, when Meltdown and Inspector uh, um, hit, uh, if you remember the vulnerabilities in, in the Intel processors, we were all very scared uh, um, for a software that runs on, on instances um, that based on those processes. But let's say, and again, I'm really hoping it won't happen, let's say tomorrow morning, God forbid, we find a vulnerability in Graviton by AWS. How do I know which part of my software, which part of my, my, my data set was exposed to the compromised or the vulnerable um, processes? If I don't have an IBOM to go with it, it's almost impossible or very, very complex for me to do. If I have it, it's two clicks away or one, one command line away uh, um, for me to, to output and start investigating and, and uh, uh, have a proper disclosure. So up until now we talked about how IBOM is important for the security perspective um, of, of the cloud or, or the infrastructure uh, practitioner. But now let's think about the operational point of view. If I take a service down, something changed, I want to take the service, now, uh, service down, how do I make sure the entire supporting infrastructure is really eliminated? And I don't have any waste, I don't have any vulnerable instances that kept they keep running. So if, if it's so important, up now we talk about why IBOM is so important, where is compliance, right? Because ASBOM is probably the, the, a compliance darling in the last two years, right? SOC 2 loves it. The US federal government really love, loves it. FedRAMP adores it. And now everyone is occupied with uh, being uh, um, um, as bomb uh, uh, centric, but is I bomb needed the, or demanded? I, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure that there's a compliance that explicitly uh, requires an I bomb. But if you know how big banks and very large enterprises like the Fortune uh, um, 100 work, you know that they are already implementing an I bomb tracking mechanism. So we need to understand they are always uh, one step ahead in terms of compliance. If they are tracking IBOM, did we miss anything? So I got, got thinking about it and, and, and started to see some efforts around IBOM. So Cyclone DX, very hot, explicitly states SBOM, SAS BOM, so bill of material for all the SAS that I use, and HBOM, which is hardware bomb. And now the, the new cool kid in the block, Salsa, I think they call it, um, supply chain level for software architecture. So I don't know why I put a picture of Elmer Fudd here, uh, um, but I'm suspecting it's more uh, um, Fudd th th than something real. Uh, um, but, but if Cyclone DX, which is important, they want to, to list the S bomb and they want to list the H bomb, the hardware bomb, and I don't have, like in my company, we don't have hardware. We are cloud native, we use only cloud. So what's the equivalent? And if my cloud is software defined infrastructure, is it part of my SBOM or not? And SAS bomb, is it just a list of SAS? Or when it comes down to Mongo Atlas or services like uh, um, NetApp Spot or, or Aqua Security, which really touches and control my infrastructure, how deep should I understand those and list uh, um, those resources in, my, in part of my, my IBOM? So FedRAMP is taking a step forward and really start to ask you to bomb everything that relates to your service, including the infrastructure part of it. But once again, I think it's important to note that IBOM is definitely not just for security. If you track your IBOM correctly, you can have your platform be much more efficient and tight. And now another story. So one of our customers calls us one day and tells us that uh, um, they, they, using Firefly, they, they found a, an environment by a sales engineer that cost them 
$3,000 per month. But they are a relatively large enterprise, so we ask, okay, fantastic, we're happy, $3,000 is a lot of money, but you pay your cloud providers, you know, orders of magnitudes more per week. Um, so, so why are you excited about it? They tell us, okay, this software engineer left the company and he did it three years ago. So for three years, an entire environment was up and running. The, the, the company thought that if uh, um, the HR management SaaS solution um, marked this employee as a, 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 a non-employee anymore, he left the company, so it takes down everything, but it didn't take down the cloud infrastructure for it. So it's a security weakness, a significant security weakness in my opinion, but also just a lot of cloud waste which uh, um, led to uh, more than 100K in uh, um, unneeded expenses. So if, if I try to wrap it up here, um, IBOM really allows the DevOps, SRE, and platform engineer enjoy the security aspects of some compliance requirements. Um, and now we need to understand why was IBOM neglected? Why when SBOM is so big, IBOM is something that we almost never or never hear about? And, and this comes down to the fact that the old world was segmented differently, right? We had the software teams care about software and IT teams care about hard hardware. So software teams care about SBOM and IT cares about HBOM. But cloud is, as mentioned before, software-defined infra, where does it fall? If I manage this, this infra through my Git and I'm deploying it using my CI CD, is it software? I'm not sure because AppSec teams and software teams don't care about IBOM, they care about SBOM. But CloudSec, they do not really care about IBOM, they just chase the next vulnerability, they chase uh, um, uh, IAM role tightening and so on and so forth. And this is why it was neglected. But what if I told you we never neglected IBOM. What if I told you that the old legacy IT world has a very detailed IBOM, extremely detailed IBOM. It's called CMDB, Configuration Management Database. Some of us can remember it. Um, amazing companies like BMC and ServiceNow built amazing products around CMDB. But this CMDB world was designed for a world where you have actual servers sitting in racks in your basement and the, the CMDBs even list the HVAC and the, the AC mechanism in your data centers. So they're built for a situation where you, you change your servers once every two years and track licenses for, for on-prem MySQL and not for Kubernetes pods going up and down every 100 milliseconds. So the CMDB world, this great IBOM database is missing for the cloud world. So for us here at KubeCon, at Cloud NativeCon, this is a very important piece that is missing. So I probably skip the shameless plug for Firefly being the best cloud native CMDB and IBOM generator, but we should think about it. Um, uh, so what is cloud native CMDB, configuration management database? It's a tool to control and see everything in my infrastructure from my public cloud, and obviously it should be multi-cloud, multi-account, but also all my relevant SaaS applications, like those Datadogs and Tubonomic and New Relic and Okta and so on and so forth. And obviously Kubernetes, Serverless, OpenShift, all the cloud native technologies. Then we need to understand which parts of my cloud are managed with infrastructure as code and which are not. The unmanaged resources are almost worthless for IBOM, because if they are not codified, to let's say Helm or Terraform, they are not scalable, they are not immutable, and I can't re-replicate them. So it's a problem. Last part, I need to understand the scale status per my infrastructure, the relationship and dependencies, and have a mindset of cloud native. It's not about listing where this server, in which physical rack it lives, it's about which user deployed it, who's the owner, and what its status. So, after we establish the importance of IBOM and the cloud native CMDB, we need to understand why drifts are key or, or eliminating drift, remediating drift and detecting drift are key to keeping 
my IBOM always up to date and to establish uh, uh, or, or handle deviations for my secured or, or my desired baseline. So a drift is every deviation between or any gap between the desired state of the cloud and the actual state of the cloud, right? So it means that I architected or, or I want to create an architecture for my cloud to look like A, but in reality it looks like B. And what can cause this transfer from A to B? It can be someone, a person doing a change. It can be um, a glitch in my CI CD pipeline. It can, be, it can be an error. It can be a third party, um, a SaaS or a, 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 a physical vendor um, and doing changes to my cloud. And this many times is a silent killer for innovation. It creates tech debt. It, it has a, um, production uh, um, issues and errors sprawl in, and it generates a lot of hassle for the ops teams. Um, so it's like Pokemons, right? We gotta catch them all. We gotta understand that, that if we architected the secure baseline or a desired baseline, we need to understand every deviation from it and handle it as much as possible. Without it, IBOM becomes irrelevant, become, becomes out of date, and this is the whole point of IBOM. Always have a detailed and accurate a representation of my infrastructure. So, final part here is after we established IBOM and we established how drift detection or remediation is important to keep um, IBOM uh, um, efficient and updated, we need to understand, or we can try to think about how we can uh, um, take advantage of IBOM. And one example is ransomware resiliency. So, if everything in my infrastructure, let's say my cloud, is properly configured, codified, and documented, it's easy to set it up in a different location, in a different cloud, in a different account, in a different region. I'll, I'll share another story. I think it was four weeks ago, one of our customers uh, um, tells us that they are uh, um, being uh, um, attacked and there's an, a ransomware incident. Um, for the Okta configuration. And obviously, you know, if you take away our Okta, we are locked out. It's literally the keys to production uh, um, because we don't have a kingdom just yet. So um, if your Okta is, is being taken away from you, you're at a problem. But if you made sure that you always have your Okta configuration properly codified and let's say in this case in Terraform, and you can go back in time and, and spin up your Terraform config your Okta configuration in Terraform from two days ago, and now just do Terraform apply for it, you're up and running, and you don't care about the ransomware attack. So this is one of the benefits of having IBOM. You are much more resilient um, to, uh, 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 to ransomware and other uh, service failures. All right, so conclusion. First part, XBOM, mostly SBOM, is one of the hottest buzzword currently on industrial years in security, but infrastructure and IBOM was neglected. It's like we're taking our jewelry and put it in a safe, but the safe is in a trailer and it's easy to, to hijack the trailer. So I think we should all track our IBOM and understand how our infrastructure looks like at any given point in time. And I think it's a professional must from a security standpoint, from a FinOp standpoint, from compliance, and from just you know being a professional. I don't need Kubernetes and I don't need serverless if I just want to, to have high scale at any cost without any professional implications, just spin up lots of Nginx servers and have any request handled super, super quickly. But it's not a professional move to do. Same goes true for IBOM. If we want to be efficient, I want to have a tight platform, I need an IBOM. Um, then we remember that the OGs, the original gangsters of IT and, and, and on-prem data centers, they understood the importance of IBOM and created the CMDB. But now let's think, which infrastructure is more complex, legacy IT or cloud? Which changes faster? Which had more technology advancement? Which are, is touched by more and more teams uh, um, at a higher pace? I think we are much more complex. Instead of just thinking about SBOM, we should all start thinking about IBOM. And the last part, how to get started. Um, we should start by inventory our cloud, understand which part of our cloud is properly codified, which is unmanaged. And this is the, the, 
basic uh, building blocks for an IBOM. And with that, I like to wish you all that your infrastructure never drift and you will never uh, be uh, um, hustled with uh, on-call in your weekend. If you like this talk, you can rate it. If not, you can also rate it. Uh, um, I'll leave it up to you. And with that, and just 15 seconds after time, I'm open to any question, if any has one. Thank you very much.